spent with all of us over the years here. One of the things that I want to start out with today uh, is a video of the experience of what it's like to wear the Daiquiri Smart Helmet. And in particular, that's because as we've gotten to you know, a bigger and bigger size for this show every year and you know, more and more things that we want to show off, it's become more and more difficult to get everybody through and everybody able to see everything. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, ask for, for a video to be put up right now. And we can pull the volume off of that video. And I'll just talk over the top of it. And one of the things you'll notice about this video is that it's actually shot through the device itself, running on you know, the Android processor of the actual device. And then we've taken secondary camera shots and time synced those so that you can see uh, Paul, in this case, one of uh, the team members at Daiquiri, wearing the smart helmet and then going through, in this case, a filter replacement experience where he's going to have guided interactive instructions that walk him through uh, immersively how to, how you change out this filter and uh, avoid any sort of dangerous conditions associated with that. One thing that I would love uh, to see from the industry, and I know a couple of the other presenters mentioned it as well, but I would uh, really love it if we could all establish a treaty where we only put things in concept videos that we can actually do. <laughs> it always is frustrating when you see things that are really difficult and really easy put right next to each other as if, uh, as if they're the same difficulty. So here you'll see uh, one of the things that we kn know is critical to the user experience here and that we continue to get more data on is not having persistent elements on the screen or in the user interface that could potentially overlap useful or needed things within, in this case, the operator's environment. So if you need to be able to see the console, you need to be able to see uh, data points or readouts, if you've got you know, a big battery indicator or network connectivity indicator, those things can be distracting. And so, in our uh, interface design principles, one of the things that's, that's always kept foremost or at the top of that list is using contextual items whenever possible, so things that are layered on top of the real world, and then uh, removing anything that's not necessary, and ultimately using kind of an adaptive paradigm to move uh, more content in and out if people need more assistance or less assistance. Because if you're performing a task for the first time, you might need you know, every bit of instruction uh, and a couple gentle reminders on top of that. But if you're a 30-year veteran performing a task that you've done every day for that 30 years, you, know, you certainly don't want the system getting in your way uh, while you're doing, uh, doing that task. You may just want a simple look up. You may want to know, you know, hey, where did the last shift leave off so you know where to pick up? And those things uh, all can be done you know, in a very uh, quick fashion and then get out of your view when you're done. So you can stop it here and then go back to the slides. So one of the other principles that we think is really critical at Daiquiri is that uh, just like augmented reality fits into this broader 4D ecosystem, we feel that the smart helmet fits into a broader uh, tool-based ecosystem within the workplace and within the enterprise. And so one of the things that, that we bring into that is the fact that this needs to feel like any tool that someone else is, uh, is used to using. This needs to sit on the desk or in the back of the truck, just like any tool uh, that this particular worker already has at their disposal. And it also can't require the creation of a brand new staff uh, just to make use of these devices. And so when you do bring this in, uh, then all of a sudden you, know, you unlock that value of uh, having all of those extra capabilities, but in the context of a tool that people are already familiar with. So as you can see, uh, I won't go over uh, in a ton of detail, but ramping up throughout 2015 with uh, pilot partners and then commercial availability going into beginning of next year. Uh, sort of the time frame for the smart helmet. And it really kind of uh, completes this circle of the connected worker uh, as part of the broader industrial internet of things. Some of the use cases that we've seen a lot of uh, interest around things like inspection, things like batch processing, uh, data visualization, uh, of course, uh, predator vision, because one of everyone's favorite features of the smart helmet, which many of you will get to try out here in our booth, is uh, the thermal vision sensor, the thermal sensor that's part of the smart helmet, which gives those augmented capabilities, or as AWE is, is referring to them this year, the superpowers. Uh, and in this case, you know, the smart helmet certainly comes with, with a ton of superpowers that come from over a dozen different sensors uh, that are available both pointing at the environment, but also pointing back at the user. 
And then as many uh, of the other presenters have touched on, uh, multifaceted user interface capabilities here, because we've found that not just different work contexts, but even uh, different individuals in those different work contexts create uh, a pretty complex matrix of different preferences and, and capabilities that are necessary to pull off those different use cases. So we're not out hunting for one silver bullet. Uh, we want to give you a full range or a full uh, uh, portfolio of capabilities that you can uh, bring to bear on your 4D experience. And lastly, not complete without applications or content. So of course, it integrates with Zachary 40 Studio, uh, which we've been you know, showing off for many years here at the show. And if you haven't seen it before, I'd encourage you to check out uh, the video recap of yesterday's workshop that'll walk you through that authoring tool. Uh, so for us, it's all about kind of this entire ecosystem and making sure that everyone has all the tools necessary to be successful. That's about it.